of biblical scale cataclysmic event you need immediate shelter and an immediate hot meal always and forever so the first place you need to go is under an overpass lots of overpasses you can find them anywhere they're instant shelter from above elements and if the rain a little bit drafty but you can have a fire in there and it's, it keeps you it's the modern day cave is what the overpass is so let's head under this one and i'll show you how to make a jiffy quick meal in about mm, less than a minute once you've found yourself an overpass you tend to like and you make sure you can secure the area fairly well if you need to in case your stay underneath the overpass needs to be longer than you expect, I'd always choose an overpass where you've got a very, very tight arc, lots of coverage from the top, not too much coverage from the sides. Make sure you don't have people who are going to be wandering up and bugging you when you're underneath your bridge. That's really, really annoying. But after you choose the correct location, you got to get a hot meal into you. Now, it's a nice sunny day today, so it's not a problem. But if it was raining right now, it'd be really hard to get a fire going and it would draw smoke and attention to you. So I go with the American Emery Hot Packs, which are really really easy to use you can use it with any kind of water and I'm gonna use a Canadian Forces beans and wieners IMP bag now you want to keep your bag take your foil pack out what I do always is I cut the top of this Take that off like that, perfect. Now these packs are some ingenious wizard thing that somebody thought up where if you add water to them, they get so hot, they'll heat up your meal. All these IMP bags are of course pre-cooked and they'll last for about a billion years. So all you gotta do is warm that up. However, it's difficult to do. Now in the actual instructions on there, they say you should boil it. That's not really feasible if you're on a rush. So what you need to do is you take this, you wanna fill only to that line. It doesn't seem like that's enough to fill, but actually that's all you really do need to fill. Kind of weird. Now you can use any water. In, in worst case scenario, if you wake up and you're on a desert, plateau you can actually piss in this and use it to heat up your meal which I think is recycling but my wife gets upset when she sees me pissing in the hydrogen bag so whatever you just take a little bit of water in here just a tiny amount of water kind of like that drop her down now as you can see I put way too much water in there that's how little water you're supposed to use it's just the tiniest bit so I'm gonna dump a bit out there we go getting there somewhere now a little bit more now we got it. Now you take this pack, now this is gonna heat up really quick. And as it heats up, the chemical reaction is gonna be causing hydrogen to be coming out of this bag. So you don't wanna do this indoors. And if you wanna use the hydrogen for something afterwards, you can't. So you stuff that inside the bag here, and then you stuff this pack here along on the inside as such. And you see a little steam coming out of there now? There it is. That's all hydrogen. Now, I wouldn't huff that, but you can uh, you can actually uh, use that hydrogen as an explosive in case you needed to like clear some stumps or something. But then you lay it sort of on your side like this. You wanna keep your water in there and keep the heater pad side down so it, it's gonna heat your packet. And and that's it. You can carry on with uh, fortifying the underside of your overpass. My name's Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. Now when deploying the mock pack, there's a, you gotta choose a location where to deploy, set up your mobile command center, your mobile operations command, MOC, that's what mock stands for. The purpose for this is so that you have a home base of operations where you can leave your gear and any equipment that you scavenge from the ruined remains of humanity. This place should be secluded, it should be private. Your major method of concealment is that the ignorance of others to your location. You should not set this up in the middle of a field. However, if you're in a heavy urban environment and you have to get somewhere where you can make sure that, you know, you've got some nature around, you've got a little bit of camera concealing possibilities, I would head directly to a golf course and you can set them up there. The only thing you need to do in the golf course is make sure that you either bring some doweling with you or you can take one of those little flags and cut them in half and you'll be able to make a tent pole out of it. I particularly have used these this, this two set of oak dowling to make the tent pole. This is something you will acquire in your travels. You don't need to bring tent poles with you. Make them as you go along. This particular mobile operations command center is designed to be deployed in a forest region. 
Okay, this mock pack can be deployed anywhere. It's very important you remember that. I, if you have a chance, choice, do not deploy this in open field. You wish to deploy this in a forest and use the natural cam and concealment to keep your location private. When you're out in the field, there's absolutely nothing better than a good night's sleep. And getting a good night's sleep in the field is very, very difficult to do. So the best, most cost-effective sleeping system available in the world today is the Canadian Armed Forces sleeping bag. Now, I modified it slightly, but this is essentially how it works. You've got a Gore-Tex outer that even though you may or may not have a mobile operations center I have time to set it up. You can pull this out. This is completely waterproof. You could sleep and a, a river could run underneath you during the night and you will still remain dry. Beneath that you have the Canadian Forces Outer. This is filled with an eider down, okay? All of the, uh, the it's uh, the down from these uh, Arctic ducks, I guess is what they tell us. But it was, uh, it's extremely, extremely warm. You will not need to use all of this all the time. Just sometimes the outer will be fine. Inside of that, you have the inner. So you have the Gore-Tex bag, the outer, then the inner sleeping bag. The inner sleeping bag has no zipper on it and has this, uh, this sheath that goes over top. Uh, this sleeping bag system here, now there's been so many different variations of it. They, some folks, what they do is they take like two outers. I think this one, depending on the year of the issue, you can have two outers, but you have one, like uh, an inner sleeping bag and an outer sleeping bag. I like this one because it's got the fleece top, so when you're all snuggled down, you can put this up over your head and the, and the flannel on it keeps you nice and warm. Beneath that, you don't want to sweat to meet completely in your bag, so what I have is you can get a liner for it, which is a, a cotton liner that will absorb your body sweat, but I like using this Norwegian Arctic fleece blanket. This is uh, issued to Norwegian troops, apparently. So that is your complete system. Now, as good as this is, to make your sleep a little bit more comfortable, it's good to have an air mattress. A lot of the civilian air mattresses on the market require a lot of time to blow up. This Canadian Forces air mattress here, if you unscrew the nozzle, it will self-inflate over a period of time. If you leave it for like half an hour, you come back, you simply do up this nozzle, and it'll be compressed and keep you off the ground. The earth wants to kill you. It will suck all of the heat from your body if you are sleeping in the cold. It is very important you do not sleep on the ground. If you have not got a sleeping system like this and you have to work with minimals, you only got to range your blanket, lay down sticks, lay down anything to create an air space underneath you so you do not sleep directly on the ground. This can lead to hypothermia and death. Dream that you get what you call reality.
Canadian Forces shelter halves are zipped together. You use uh, your pole inside the rings here to keep it tight and solid. And this should be kept down over. Some people gun tape this down so they make sure that there's no, uh, no rain going to get through on that seam. All seams, all zippers are an opportunity for leaks. You want to watch that. Going around, all I've done is taken 550 paracord, which is uh, available at any Army surplus store. And I use that in conjunction with bungee cords to provide uh, like a leverage action, a spring action. If a guy were to come in here and hit this, it's not a big deal. Versus a lot of modern tents, if you were to go and, you know, throw things at it, do whatever at it, a lot of the time your, your gear will, uh, it'll, it'll rip through the tent, but this is a heavier gauge material, so it'll stand up longer. It's about durability, okay? Everything to do with the military is about durability and endurance because you have to equip a lot of men so you can use their rationale to your advantage. Moving around, more 550 cord, using just standard steel nails, You just uh, about uh, seven to eight inch nails, 24 cent jobbies. Try to get them galvanized so you have no rust. You just use your uh, your paracord to tie it off. If, you, if you're in a severely windy condition or a mountain condition, you may wish to tie it off at every single loop. And then this thing will look like a, it'll look like a, a rock when it's done if you tie off every single loop. As well, if you're in the bush, you can tie these up into angles into trees and you can actually make quite a nice little dome for yourself if you've got the bush around. But we are deploying on a completely flat surface. All around the back here, you'll notice that it's the same as the front. You can leave it open, but what I've done is I've uh, tied it off. This is designed to be tied off, so you don't have, you have a little bit of privacy for whatever happens, coming and going, what have you. Moving around to the far side here, we've got straight bungee cord going down, providing lots of tension. Now there's an advantage to disadvantage to having lots of tension and wide spread out. You probably want to get this as close to here as possible. If you're in a wetter climate, you may wish to just pin this directly to the ground. But in, the, uh, in a colder climate where it's sort of dry, if you've got the shelter, it's nice to have it low so you got a little bit of ventilation, a little bit of ventilation in there if it's warm, but if it's really, really cold, keep it down, keep it low to the ground, keep the body heat in. That's the idea. Same here, you can, on the other side, I tied off all five to one point. This one here, I've tied them off just to here. So I've got, I've got two points. I've got your uh, center point and I've got the, the other one here. There's no set rules. It's about what gets it tight. You can tie everything to individual spikes. It doesn't matter, but what is important is that all the weight is transferred to the ground. Let Mother Earth support you. Uh, I've used just a paracord, a piece of bungee cord rather, to keep this tent flat back. If during the night, you'd want to just throw that over, tie yourself down, and then you have a completely closed unit. Now we have the WOG Mobile Operations Center, or MOC. This setup here will enable you to exist in the field for quite some period of time. All of the gear you see here is brand new. Of course, over time it will weather, but due to the construction of this shelter, wind, rain, sleet, it has all kinds of give. Being rigid is not good. You must build a shelter like water. You put water in a bowl, it becomes the bowl. You put water in a cup, it becomes the cup. Make your shelters like water, my friend. So as long as you keep it strong and firm and with enough give, the importance is give. You must keep everything very, very sturdy. But all the people wonder, how, how is this possible? The way it's done is because everything's transferred to the pegs. You have to run around this thing in concentric circles until you get it really, really tight and then you, you nail it down. There's no real way to explain how to set this up without looking at the basic design and then going out in the bush and doing it yourself because all this is is an elaborate piece of wide fabric. That's all. Push came to shove, you could make your own version of these just by studying this video and seeing how it's set up. Of course, you wouldn't be using bright orange bungee cords. You want to get yourself some olive drab spray paint, some uh, black spray paint, matte black, and you can actually attack the entire top of your mock shelter. Some people are known to put flags on them, string them through the, through the sides or whatever, but this is just a basic unit configuration. You're going to need your laptop with your Wi-Fi. You're going to need your webbing ready to go. You're going to need your, uh, the, your AWOL bag with that which is not in the mock pack ready to go, that which isn't immediately available in your campsite in case you have to bolt. But this is your basic introductory level layout to the mock center. On October 18th, 2005, I received a phone call at 8 o'clock in the evening. It's from my sister. She told me that, Sean, mom and dad's house is burned down. And so it did. We showed up here. The firemen were here and they were doing a great job. They tried to save as much as they could. This is my old room. It's gone now. It's empty. My parents had all my memories and all my stuff in here and it's burned out now. It's completely husked. Everything that's left is shoveled out. Ashes cleaned up. We're just waiting for the people to come down to condemn it. 
all the possessions I had of my youth, anything that I thought, you know, you want to hang on to, comic books, old records, things that define your memories as a child, physical manifestations of your life, all of it was here. And it's gone. It makes no difference. Soon this house will be leveled. And again, it'll make no difference to me in the current state. What will happen is, is that my life will go on. So it's a collection of baggage that I no longer needed that got burned away. That's all it is. The things you own wind up owning you. That is true. So the trick to avoiding the pain that comes from separation with your material goods is to separate yourself from your material goods and realize that it's all just stuff. Nothing you have defines you. You define you. And when that happens and your house burns down, it's just another Tuesday. place here okay now first of all anytime you're going near any sort of a supernatural structure you never I don't care what the reason is you never go in there at night I don't give a shit what's happening you don't go in there at night you see it all the time oh little Jimmy's missing let's wait for the fog to roll in and then we'll head down to the house fuck that if Jimmy's missing, he's at the house. If you go in the house, you're gonna get sucked in and eaten. That's how it works. Now, graffiti is very telling. The first thing that's gonna happen is I'm in a low light circumstance in here. So we gotta change our optics up. here that isn't broken that's cut which means that whatever is in the basement is trying to get up and try to come up through the basement to the roof produce some heat let the walls on fire but the thing didn't burn but that will be proof of the supernatural though because all the whole purpose of ghost dance of the operation is to see that there is something that's it that's all i want I don't care what happens. People are bursting into flames. I could give a shit less. So long as everybody who takes part in Operation Ghost Dance is well aware of the threats and risks. But we're just, you know, the logs are sick of it. We're going to cut the shit. Be prepared. Be prepared for all kinds of results. Well, we're all But it will prepared. happen. Thing. I don't really know what I'm going to wake up. Some people, like, I talked to one person and they said I was going to wake up like I could, people could start levitating and stuff and I'm not careful. And, and uh, so I, I don't know. Like, do you think there's any danger in this at all? Not as long as you keep your intentions firm. You're pretty clean on that intention That thing. intention has to be there. That's, that's the key to all magic, all manifestation. Right. If you're trying to manifest um, an awakening in people, a spiritual awakening, and that's your intention, that's perfect. It's strength in numbers. You know, awaken. That's the whole point, is awakening. We don't know what we're going to awaken. We don't know how it's going to awaken. We don't know how it's going to affect them. They're going to wake up. That's the plan. And we're looking at about the numbers. About 5,000 people are going to do this at the same amount of time. Over period of about no real direction other than to wake up and to empower yourself yeah empower yourself yeah the whole like some people could float it's all like focusing so we're taking 5,000 people putting the energy in a ball and then forcing it back on so that's sort of the idea sounds like it could be a good idea sounds like it could go horribly wrong how, how could it go horribly horribly wrong you're always good you know and if it wasn't for you I wouldn't feel as empowered do the kind of things that I do in my day-to-day -day life. Please, please don't blame me. It's not, <laughs> you know, no, seriously, no. Dax like my big brother, you know. If he'd have said no, I wouldn't have done it. So yeah. now, 
Now that Dax made sure it was okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on and you know try to try to try to help these kids using you know ancient Crowley's techniques to to try to you know make the world a better place. My name's Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. I'm gonna get arrested. So you say you gotta know why the world goes around And you can't find the truth in the things you've found And you're scared shitless cause evil abounds Come join us Well I heard you were looking for a place to fit in